You are listening to Geek Fest Rants on the IC Robots Radio Network. You have located Geek Fest Rants, the entertainment podcast for genre geeks like you. Shall we play a game? Covering the world of vintage and current film and television since 2010. Game over, man. This is game over. Featuring in-depth conversations on sci-fi, horror, fantasy, comics, toys, and conventions. So say we all. So say we all. And now sit back, relax, and enjoy today's show. <laughs> You did my words not, did you? Pass on what you have learned. Strength, mastery, hmm. but weakness, folly, failure also. Yes, failure most of all. The greatest teacher failure is. Hi, everybody, and welcome once again to Geek Fest France. My name is Carlos Perón, and today we are doing hopefully an abbreviated episode uh, not a full-blown episode, but an episode that we really weren't expecting on doing. What we're going to be talking a little bit about today is a little bit of a follow-up to a number of episodes we've done in the past. I believe last year, we started them last year, three episodes having to do with the Rebel Force radio controversy, specifically having to do with toxic fandom. Recently, something happened that has kind of brought me back into the subject. I wasn't expecting on on really doing much or any really uh, follow-up because my covering of that particular news event, the events having to do with them being basically run out of town as far as being able to have access to any sort of Lucasfilm thing, had kind of happened already. And uh, I did three episodes explaining myself, you know, what I was uh, trying to accomplish and trying to determine what exactly what had happened to them. I did give them an opportunity to chime in and to give us their side of the story, and they never bothered really to respond, which is the equivalent of a no comment as far as I'm concerned. So this was back in, I think it was like December or October or something like that. It was quite a bit ago. And I pretty much thought that, okay, that was the end of that story. We, you know, we, we, we examined the story. We move on to other things as we've done. However... A couple days ago, I received a notice through email from YouTube letting me know that there were three shows of mine that were being challenged as a copyright claim. Those three shows. And it wasn't as if, you know, sometimes uh, when you put up a video on YouTube, sometimes the, the music might get flagged and you end up having to change the music or trim it or doing something so that it doesn't, you know, interfere with any copyright problems. And a lot of times these are generated automatically. YouTube has its own algorithms that can figure out, you know, if certain music is being played for a certain amount of time and boom, it gets flagged and sometimes you are asked to remove it. They remove your monetizing, which it really doesn't affect me because I don't monetize. I used to a long time ago, the monetizing was so minuscule that they basically said, you know what, we really don't need to monetize you anymore. <laughs> so it, it was kind of, be- I remember it was kind of becoming annoying because I would get an email saying, you have 23 cents this month. And it's like, what the hell am I going to do with 23 cents? And it, it was actually more difficult to stop monetizing, to, to actually ask to please stop monetizing than for them to actually tell me they were going to stop monetizing me. So like I said, I, I'm not making a dime out of uh, any of this. And, you know, haven't in, in possibly in years. So that is one of the things they do, you know, when, when, you, uh, when, you, when you have a situation having to do with, with copyrighted material. Sometimes they ask you to take it off. Sometimes they might go straight to what they call as giving you a strike. And, and when they give you a strike, it's basically, it's supposed to be three strikes and you're out. And they actually can suspend your account. Well, lo and behold, I, I take a look at my email and there's three copyright claims against those three specific shows. And as I mentioned before, these are not generated automatically. These were specifically manually generated by Rebel Force Radio LLC, meaning that this came directly from Jimmy and Jason. Now, the reason I'm putting this short video out is to kind of give everybody a heads up that there is a possibility here, you know, based on the decision of YouTube, that they could issue me those three strikes and potentially close the channel down completely. 
because that is the rule. Three strikes and you're out. And these guys are uh, trying to pursue a three strike action against my channel. Again, claiming some kind of copyright. Uh, unfortunately, the claim doesn't specify what exactly are they claiming a copyright. Are they claiming a copyright for something that was played in the show? Something that is shown in the show? I, I don't know. So I really don't understand what the copyright claim is. There is a procedure where you can challenge those claims, which I'm in the middle of right now, which by the time this video goes up, uh, it, it might have already been decided or might not. It, it, sometimes it takes quite a bit of time. In the meantime, you cannot see the shows, those three specific episodes, which are episode 360, titled Rebel Force Radio Controversy, Star Wars Toxic Fandom. Episode 363, titled From a Certain Point of View, Rebel Force Radio Controversy Continued. And episode 367, titled Andrew Gaska, Gamergate, Comics Gate, and Rebel Force Radio Controversy, Conclusion. These were three separate episodes. Uh, well, as I just said, right now you cannot view those episodes through YouTube because they're being challenged. And I'm counter-challenging, so they're in the middle of, so you can't really go into them. However, you can still listen to them through iTunes or my website. My website, geekfestrants.com, you can stream them. You can actually, somehow, I believe, I'm, I'm still having access to them through YouTube for some bizarre reason, which I cannot explain, but if you go directly to YouTube, it will not allow you to, to listen to them. So my question then becomes at this point, what do we do at this point? Because I don't know what the challenge is and whether, and because I don't know, you know, the, 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 the legality of it in terms of, is it a legitimate claim or isn't it a legitimate claim? What my point of view is that the audio clips that I used were very minimal, very small sound bites, and they were directly having to do with the story that we were covering. This wasn't a dramatized piece. This wasn't a comedy piece. This wasn't your your more typical situation, if you will, of somebody claiming that they did something and they didn't do it. No, we were, you know, you know we are playing a, a number of small sound bites that accurately portray the whole origin of this controversy. The words that they spoke is what generated this backlash against them. So as a responsible news reporter, if you will, I'm not claiming to be that, but from what I understand, in order to present, you know, their side of the story that's already out there circulating without misquoting them, you know, we played those small clips of those specific phrases that they said that really got them in, in really deep, deep trouble. And we did that in a number of episodes. So that is possibly something they might be objecting to. I don't know. I do have the slate of each episode, and the slate has the name of their show, and I have pictures of all the different topics that we discuss or all the different people that we talk about in the episode. Uh, it's not video. It's not moving video. It's just a couple of small pictures, and in, in those pictures, we do have pictures of uh, other people, them, and, and some. in the case of some of the other shows, the different topics that have absolutely nothing even to do with uh, the Rebel Force Radio topic including the name of their show. We have that there too, so people understand that is what we're talking about. Uh, we're not talking about NBC, we're not talking about Universal, we're not talking about 20th Century Fox, we're talking about that show. Again, we are not claiming to be that show, and you would have to be really, really misguided to even think that, because it, it just makes zero sense. It is basically, like I said before, it is a fair use a practice to be able to play a small clip and talk about that clip in a news fashion, okay? Uh, I, I, it's not like you're playing a song and you're singing along to it. It's not like you're claiming, hey guys, I watched this fantastic, funny thing. I'm going to play it for you. No, this is a news segment. And in the news segment, we are making people aware of something that was done or said, and we are playing it so people can get a a better uh, direct line, undistorted, if you will, line of what was said. This way, some, you know, it, it, theoretically, you could say that, you know, you hear something said uh, that claims to be you, in this case, it claims to be them, and they can turn around and say, wait a minute, that thing you just played, that's not us. That's somebody pretending to be us. We never said those things, but guess what? That didn't happen. They, they never, as far as I can tell, publicly, you know, and uh, to other people in the internet or whatever, they never claimed that that wasn't them saying those things. When I tried to contact them, they did not reply to me. I specifically pointed out those specific quotes 
as needing more clarification. They didn't say a word about that either. Uh, now, obviously, they've seen these videos and is what has triggered them to react this way. Uh, now, why would they wait? Let's see. October, November, December, January, February, March. Why would they wait six months to complain about something? I don't know. I don't understand. I'm not really sure. They knew about it right away. After I put the first or second show out, you know, back in October, I, I, I specifically wrote them a letter, uh, an email, you know, asking for more clarification. You know, I wanted more information on the subject to see if they had any other sources for me to go to or if they wanted to say something officially and if they wanted to make a comment or a statement. Uh, but they completely, you know, ignored it, which is fine. You can, there's nothing wrong with that in terms of you, you, nobody is under obligation to talk about something uncomfortable for them, something that's embarrassing to them. Yeah, of course, I understand them not wanting to talk about it. However, you know, if there is an issue, uh, especially a, a copyright issue or a legal issue, let's say, uh, you would figure that they would want to say something right away. And they would want to say something directly to me since I am opening that channel of communication. I'm opening it up for them to be able to, you know, to say, hey, what are you doing? Those aren't my, those were not our voices. We never said those things. You know, why are you reporting on these lies that, you know, it's all lies. All these, all these audio clips you're playing, those are not us. Those are some other people pretending to be us. But again, that's, I think I'm pretty sure that was them because they are not denying it and it's out there and people have heard it and tons of articles have been written about it. I've read most of them. I linked a lot of them to the uh, episodes. So, yeah, it is a little unusual that they decide to do this now. And like I said before, you know, if, if this is a legitimate complaint, you know, if if I would have gotten a, some kind of communication directly from them asking me to please take this off because this is, you know, some kind of a copyright thing that, that you know, you don't you, you can't put up there for that purpose. I would have taken it down. Of course, I would have taken it down. You know, I would have I would have researched it a little more and said, you know, figure out whether or not, you, you know, you do have. Uh, the right to do that sort of thing because again it's it's a news it's not entertainment we're not dealing with entertainment here it's not uh like one of those very popular nowadays hater videos that they just sit there and just hate on somebody uh, no I, I think i presented a very thorough uh, uh, examination of, of of you know what a big fan i used to be of their show and how these things floating out there that popped out that they started just saying out of the blue, kind of started to turn me off from their from their regular show, you know. And I think I, I presented a pretty good case, uh, and I never uh, incited anyone. I never suggested anyone uh, should stop listening to them. I I just said, you know, as far as I'm concerned, I have to kind of step away from this because it's not really working for me. It's it's it does it doesn't doesn't feel good anymore to listen. And uh, for people, you know, they have to make up their own minds. That's their problem. That's you know that's their thing to do. But yeah, it's it's a little um, it's a little disappointing. On the other hand, it's when you really really look at it, uh, when you really really examine what's going on, this is basically somebody who's upset because they are getting negative publicity because they are seeing negative stories about them. If they are not being portrayed in a good light, if they're being portrayed in a bad light, what would be considered a bad light, they need to quiet that down. And through YouTube, it's a perfect opportunity uh, to be able to quiet someone down because of, you know, the YouTube rules when it comes to those technicalities about doing that sort of thing. Again, I am not convinced that anything inappropriate was done because, again, it's a news piece. You're reporting on news. You know, you want to show if you're talking about uh, something outrageous that the president said, for example, you'll play the clip of the president saying that outrageous thing. This way you don't, you know, you're not going to play a three hour long speech. But if there's a phrase or two that are relevant to the story, you can play those those sound bites because it's for educational news purposes. But anyway, that's what what I'm looking into is being able to present my counter claim in that manner. But like I said, there is the possibility that this could all backfire and they might say, no, even that sort of thing qualifies as copyright. So, yeah, it's 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 a bad thing. You shouldn't have done that. Or and if I did. And if that's what it is, then that's fine. I, you know, I would accept whatever decision YouTube makes. And if I did something wrong, it would be my fault. And I understand that. That's fine. 
which would mean uh, the shows that we currently have on would no longer be there because I believe YouTube could shut down the entire channel based on those three copyright claims. If that happens, I just want to reassure people that we will still have the shows in our other usual places like the actual website, like I said, geekfestrants.com or in iTunes like we do every week. And we have other you know, podcatching uh, uh, services available too. I might even uh, look at starting another channel and re-uploading uh, majority of these shows. But I think what I'm going to do in the meantime is I'm going to re-edit those shows to remove those things that, again, because I don't know exactly what they're objecting to, to possibly remove any sound bites that are theirs uh, and any pictures that I might have used in the slate of the show. You know, just the title of the show so people know what we're talking about. For example, the uh, their logo, the name of their show... I'll remove that and I'll replace it with, I, I actually have, believe it or not, a lanyard that was part of me and my whole family actually purchasing tickets to their live in Orlando recording of their show. And part of the ticket included getting this lanyard from them and they weren't kind enough to sign it. Let's see, Jason wrote, the force will be with you always. Jason Swank, that's what it says on the lanyard. And Jimmy Mac uh, wrote, may the force be with you, bro. And he drew a little TIE fighter in the corner. So, so I'm pretty sure this would be an acceptable thing to show because it's mine, I own it, I paid for it, and I can display it as part of my show. Again, this is a perfect example of a way of being able to replace something. I actually took pictures, I remember, during that day of the uh, that fan meetup that we had. So, you know, I might be able to even use those pictures because technically I own those pictures. They were taken with my camera. So, yeah, there are other things I could replace, you know, all of these possible questionable things with. I don't know. But for all we know, you know, YouTube might turn around tomorrow and say... No, everything's fine. Everything's back to normal. Or they might say, no, sorry, you're out of here. Boom. You know, either way, it could go either way. We don't know right now. So until that happens, uh, I just wanted to give everybody the heads up just in case all of a sudden, you know, you start to wonder, hey, whatever happened to that channel that we had on YouTube? Well, like I said, this is a possibility, uh, but there are other sources to be able to stream our shows and listen to our shows uh, like we normally have done in the past. This is a very, very strange situation behind the scenes a lot of stuff's been happening not directly with us this is the first time that our show is now getting blowback if you will or basically attacked to try to silence you know the episodes that we made obviously they don't really give a damn about our other episodes it's just the ones that deal with them and portray them and not in a good light that is something that they want to kind of silence and this kind of goes along i think with the strategy uh, that they talked about jason talked about during his Geeks and Gamers interview of the, uh, you know, don't apologize, do what you want, do what you do, and it's just keep going forward and don't look back. It doesn't really matter. Don't engage. Just keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. And that is a very uh, public relations marketing kind of strategy, if you will. It's a very somewhat acceptable strategy, but we do also know that behind the scenes, a lot of other strange stuff is going on. A lot of it is bordering on harassment and uh, threats and that kind of thing. Again, not with us because we have not experienced that. Uh, you know, we'll see what happens. But other shows, other podcasters, other creators out there who have been critical of what's been happening, uh, specifically ones that are bigger and more popular, you know, they've experienced all kinds of really, really weird traditional trolling type of behavior, threats and rude things and harassment and that kind of thing. And it is also a very potentially troublesome time coming uh, because we do have celebration next month in Chicago, which happens to be the uh, stomping grounds of Jimmy Mack and, and a lot of other people that are uh, Chicago natives out there. And, you know, we, we do have the, the big gathering of all the Star Wars nerds that it's going to be there. I wish I could be there. I, I really do wish I could be there, but can't do it. I will have to live vicariously through all the other fans attending, as I've done in many, many other ones. And there is the question of what's going to happen. Will people behave themselves? Because a lot of this super, super negativity started happening, obviously, after The Last Jedi and specifically after Solo. So a lot of these events, a lot of these quotes that they've been saying, a lot of this nasty stuff that came out of Rebel Force Radio, 
Uh, I mean, granted, some of it started back during the Rogue One press conference and some other things, but a lot of this this latest stuff that really, really completely turned me and many of their listeners off was really, really some nasty stuff having to do with their page, I believe, with their Patreon show. And because we have this big event coming up that is going to bring in not only your typical average Star Wars fan, but it's also going to bring in this new wave of angry, disgruntled, unfortunately, not all of them, but there are going to be a contingency of your sexist, racist, you know, that kind of thing. The thing that Rebel Force Radio was, I'm going to say dabbling in, because I could never accuse them of being, you know, fully out there, out and out and proud, you know, they dabble with the Geeks and Gamers kind of format and the kind of listener and kind of reaction that always angry mode uh, type of format you know as far as I remember when I used to listen to them they, they were never in that mode that is those are just things that I guess they I don't know I guess they just tried it out to see what it would be like or or maybe they slipped like I, I mentioned this before maybe they just had a brain fart and and they they were not able to keep their personal feelings off the show uh, so you know their personal feelings and their and the way they behave behind the scenes and at home and you know with their friends it might be just like the geeks and gamers model but to present themselves in a public scenario they have to act civil and i guess maybe after all these years of acting civil they cracked and and they they let their true feelings come out and again, because of the climate of you know, the social climate we're under right now, uh, maybe they figured, you know what, there, there might be something, there might be a little more revenue, a little more sponsorship if, if we do kind of go into that, that Fox Newsy kind of uh, Glenn Beck-ish, uh, Rush Limbaugh-y kind of approach and delivery of, of our particular brand of entertainment. And I think pretty much everybody said, uh, no, pal, we don't want that. Uh, granted, they still have a ton of followers. I mean, that's that's understood. But the big stick, you know, that they got hit with was Lucasfilm. When they started attacking Lucasfilm left and right and their employees and demanding certain things and instigating certain actions towards people like Andy Gutierrez and, you know, all that kind of trolling that was taking place with... Uh, and Marie Tran and and the verbal sparring they had, you know, with Chuck Wendig and stuff like that. You know, even though Chuck also got in trouble for it. Guess what? So did Rebel Force Radio. And at that point, as I mentioned before, they got cut out. They lost access. They lost guests. They were no longer the inside man they were before. They were at a point not too long ago where they were almost a branch. They were an arm of Lucasfilm. They were almost the official fan branch anything having to do with fandom that's the place people would go Filoni would go Sansweet would go and these are people that they're begging now to come back and they're just not getting any traction they're not coming back so they've been trying anything conceivable especially as celebration approaches to somehow get back in the good graces of Lucasfilm and I honestly don't see any crack in uh, being able to get back in there. I mean, I, I haven't seen... Obviously, there's no contrition because, we again, we know the playbook. The playbook is deny, deny, it never happened, don't apologize, keep going. Perfect. That is their mantra. That's their business model. Good for them. Good luck. But Lucasfilm doesn't seem to be that interested in that. And we also know that behind the scenes, there's been a lot of uh, Facebook and... Uh, Twitter and all kinds of messages going back and forth, uh, you know, from the RFR crowd trying to convince some of their fans to approach Lucasfilm and to demand and to beg and to plead with Lucasfilm to please bring them back. These guys are the best in the world. You need them back. We fans want them back. You know, trying to do something like, you know, the grassroots thing of trying to get back in the good graces and... You know, they just don't want to back. And not that any of them would even care to listen to my advice or even, you know, try to open up a dialogue. But I kind of see it as, think of it as, uh, if, if you know, if I was giving them the advice of, of you know, how to get back into the good graces of, of Lucasfilm, I would say, don't bother. Think of Lucasfilm as a girlfriend you had. 
and for whatever reason, you did something really bad that really turned her off. And she just doesn't want you anymore. And you are not going to get a second or a third or a fourth chance anymore. You, you know, you've had slip ups here and there and things have happened and you tried to correct and that's fine. But guess what? At a certain point, you just went a little too far and this particular girlfriend just doesn't want you anymore. She is over you. She doesn't want you. She doesn't need you. You know, Lucasfilm has other branches, especially with Disney now. They, they have other means of getting, you know, they have a very successful online show where where they have professional, you know, professional people. Not like you guys that are doing this, just like most of us on the side. These guys are getting paid directly from Lucasfilm to host these shows. And they have access to Lucasfilm like you guys used to, you know, a long time ago. But these guys have it like continues. They practically live there because that's that's their job. And they they have Filoni. Now they have they have all the big shots. They have all the Lucasfilm big shots that you guys had a little bit of in the past, but these guys have even more now. So I'm sure it's devastating and, and it hurts your feelings that you're being cast aside because this old girlfriend you had now found a, a new boyfriend with more money, <laughs> if you will, a shinier car, whatever. But, you know, they, they had fun with you while, while you were, you know, dating, but now it's over and as an adult, which you guys are grown men, I'm sure you're you're getting close to 50 now, you're, you're probably all pushing 50, uh, you should know when to kind of cut ties and say, you know what, I, I'm going to leave it alone. You know what, Star Wars doesn't want me anymore. Lucasfilm doesn't want me anymore. I, I, I can think about those days when I first started dating this girl, you know, the original films and how good it felt and, and, and through even the, the prequels and they weren't great, but, you know, it was still pretty good. And now with these new films, it's just so hard. And it's just not what it used to be. And it's just very difficult. You should be able to let go. She's just not into you. Star Wars is not into you. Star Wars doesn't want you. Star Wars wants fans. Star Wars doesn't want negative people that are just there to troll and be angry and incite trolling and harassment and, you know, that kind of thing. So there's lots of stuff out there. I know you guys do a, I don't know if you still do it, but you used to do a Bond podcast, I think, or something like that. And you used to do a, a soundtrack podcast. There's other stuff out there for you. But Star Wars is not going to come back to you or people like Geeks and Gamers and say, you know what, guys? We were wrong. We were so wrong about everything why don't you tell us how to fix everything? Because you guys are the real Star Wars fans. So, you know, we can fire Kathleen Kennedy and we'll fire as many women as you guys feel, you know, what, what is an acceptable amount of women and minorities and gay people and black people and, 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 and foreigners? And, you, know, you tell us, what is the acceptable amount to have that does not overwhelm, you know, our existing white men here? Because, you know, we understand how when you introduced uh, women here or there, the next step is to get rid of all men, like you guys have said so many times before. So you tell us how to do it. You know, let's assume, let, again, let's just dream here. And let's say Fox all of a sudden buys back Disney and gets Star Wars. You know, the reverse of what just happened. And for some reason, some psychotic individual says, you know what? I want Fox News to run the Lucasfilm division. And we want to do everything the opposite of how Disney was doing it. And they'll be like, you know what, guys? There used to be these podcasters that, you know, they were very popular. And then they started saying stuff they got in trouble for. But now this is exactly what the things we want them to say, you know. You think that could happen? I, I You think the, you can have this topsy-turvy flip, you know, within Lucasfilm that they're going to want the type of Star Wars you're looking for, the type of Star Wars that you envision happened. Not only you, obviously, but every other, you know, all the other haters out there, you know, the like I said, the geeks and gamers, the all of the, I mean, there's so many of them. It's amazing. The, again, it's, I understand the money must be really good and there is money in just making people angry. Anger sells and, and I get it. Hey, listen, I'm not going to tell you how to make your money, but I honestly don't think they're going to do that. 
I don't think Star Wars is going to come back begging to you or any other group like that, uh, you know, to please come back to us and tell us how to run our company because we are, you know, incapable of doing that on our own. So, like I said, she's not into you. Star Wars is not into you. Move on. Don't be a stalker. Don't turn into that stalker boyfriend that is, you know, watching <laughs> from across the street at night. Is she home yet? What's she doing? Why Star Wars doing? Why Star Wars starting a new show? I didn't. Did I say I could? I don't think that nobody told me I could do a new show. Nobody. Nobody asked my permission. You know. Don't turn into that guy. So again, there's plenty out there for everybody to see. I know they won't take my advice. You know. Uh, you know, I, I give that. I, I try to give that advice to to, to most of the uh, Star Wars haters out there that are trolling the internet. And it's like, why do you waste your time? Why do you spend time trying to convince people that everything sucks and Star Wars is horrible? And oh my God, my life is ruined. And and you people with your women and your agendas and the, your SJWs and all that. It's like, oh my God, find a hobby for crying out loud. Anger and stalking and trolling is not a hobby. <laughs> Being angry and upset all the time, that cannot make you happy. It can make people money, don't get me wrong. There are guys cashing checks left and right out of that. You know, making money out of these angry individuals. But they're ten times smarter than you because they're actually making money. So, again, to our fans, whether it's 1, 10, 20, I don't even know, maybe... God forbid, maybe we got 100 fans. I don't know. You know, we're a small operation here. We're nothing uh, fancy like these other shows. If for some reason we end up not being around YouTube, we will return in some other shape or form. Hey, maybe we'll go to Vimeo or something else. I don't know. Maybe we'll return on YouTube under a different name or something different. I don't know. You know, like I said, I, I think I'm still going to re-edit those shows just to play it safe. Just to play it safe. And again, for all I know... The, they might not have a leg to stand on, or they might. I don't know at this point. But I want to give you guys the heads up about it. This way we're not all surprised as to what happened. So, thank you guys uh, for listening. I wasn't planning on returning to this topic. And hopefully, by next month, things will get resolved. And, you know, all the fans will go to Celebration, even Rebel Force Radio. I know they're going to be there I know, unfortunately, they don't have a podcast stage, and I know they're upset that some other shows are getting podcast stage access, and they used to get it. My God, they used to run. They, they were hosts. That, that's, like, incredible. I couldn't imagine what that must have been like and how much fun they must have had doing that. And then next thing you know, you go from the top of the mountain to not the bottom of the mountain, but you go to the basement <laughs> somewhere underneath as far as Lucasfilm goes, you go from being a trusted, the closest thing to an employee, an ally, an independent ally, to the equivalent of, I don't know, like a pariah, like somebody they don't want to even have anything to do with you. They don't want to get close to you. They don't want to interact. They don't want to do anything. If they probably could, if they could prevent you from even attending Celebration, they probably would, except obviously legally, you can't prevent people from, you know, attending because obviously you guys can get your individual tickets, but the fact that they're not letting you represent your show, yeah, that, that must be devastating. I mean, again, people like myself, because we never had that opportunity, we don't know what it is to lose that. We don't know how difficult it must be to lose that much access, to be an insider one day and an outsider the next. We're outsiders, so we're always in the outside, in the fringes <laughs> of all of this. But yeah, I, I must imagine it must be very difficult. But then at the same time, you know, you have to kind of wonder, all of us, you guys, different podcasters, even some of our listeners, you know, we're kind of getting up there in our age. And for a show like Rebel Force Radio and, and many, many other podcasters like us, the question is, do you really want to spend your time in a negative space for the next couple of years, you know, you had a pretty good long run, 10, 12 years, 13 years, something like that. And now you're at a point where you are going to devote so much percentage of your time at what is supposed to be a, a fun thing to do, having to devote it fighting with other people, fighting with other fans, fighting with other shows, threatening, you know, Copyright threats, internet accusations, sicking your fans on other groups. 
is that really what you envision that you know star wars fandom was all about I don't think so. I, I think it used to be a lot different, and I, I really wish we could just completely remove this completely from what it is happening now. And I know it is very popular now to be in that form, to to express really, really angry thoughts and just negativity, just complete negativity across the board, and to claim ownership. You know, there used to be this whole thing about Star Wars where people got way too into it. Uh, you know, the whole Lucas rape my childhood phrase from the Phantom Menace era, which seemed absolutely ridiculous back then that somebody would be so involved in Star Wars and Lucasfilm that they would take it so personally when they got to see something they didn't like, that they would take it to such an extreme. And now... It's almost like it's it's almost like a religious thing. It's kind of like, you know, Lucasfilm is doing this thing. Well, guess what? I don't like it. I'm going to just pretend it doesn't exist and I'm going to do my own thing and I'm going to and I'm going to incite my fans or my followers to take a different direction and attack the traditional fans, if you will, the fans that are still into the way things function and work. Is that really what people envision? being a Star Wars fan was like, devoting so much time to hatred, negativity, attacking other people. I mean, wow. Talk about straying off the path. Talk about doing something that goes against just norms, social norms, and you could even say the spirit of Star Wars itself. I don't have to lecture anybody on what Lucas's intent was with Star Wars in terms of his views of society and politics. They're there. They're there on the movies. You hear Luke, you hear Yoda talking about, you know, what does anger and hatred and all that stuff do to a person? I mean, for crying out loud, we have almost 11 movies now. That's all about that. And it just seems like some people just don't learn that lesson. Why do you have to go down that path? of hatred, of fear, you know, you would expect something like this out of some other genre material. But with Star Wars, I think that kind of behavior goes completely contradictory to the actual spirit and the essence of what Star Wars is all about. And for people that have chosen lately that path, that they want to just fight, argue, and insult people, and marginalize groups that are not as strong as yourself... That is not as equally represented as yourself. You want to stomp on them. You know, that's that's really, really ironic coming from a so-called Star Wars fan. The good thing is that there's still time to change. You guys can always turn things around, bring the show back to what it was, get away from all the hatred, back away from it all. Just back away from it. Understand how certain things you said hurt people. I know that, again, I, I keep remembering Jason's interview. Don't apologize for anything. Don't apologize for anything. Don't apologize for anything. That is just not a good way of living your life. As I said before, if I did something wrong, I'll take the blame. I will apologize. You have to be able to do that. I'm pretty sure in your heart of hearts, you know you did something wrong. Not just because of the punishment. Not just because of the Lucasfilm punishment. But... You know, when you honestly hurt somebody's feelings, and I'm not even talking about myself, I'm talking about so many people that you have directly or indirectly engaged who are now part of this whole controversy. People are picking sides. You're on their side or you're on this side. You're on that side, you're on that side. Again, it's such a contradictory thing for Star Wars fans to be at. Don't forget, everybody still has that power, including yourselves. You can make this right you can correct, you know, none of you are teenagers, 20 year olds who just don't understand the world and don't care about everybody and just want to do things their own way. We are all adults, as I mentioned earlier, pushing 50, most of us with kids. Is this really the lesson that you want to teach your children? Maybe it is. I really hope it's not. But like I said before, there's still time. You can still turn this around and bring things back to the way they were before everybody got completely off the rails. With this ugly, toxic fandom aura that seems to be 
surrounding our Star Wars community. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed today's show, and I hope that nothing bad will happen during celebration. Hope everybody behaves themselves. Nobody is there to disrupt other people or troll other people or, God forbid, do something really, really ridiculously stupid and dangerous. Because, again, uh, you know, I miss... I miss the fact that Star Wars used to be the place where you could go and feel completely safe at home. And, you know, going to Star Wars events now, because of all of this, it kind of takes the, the fun out of it, the safe element out of it. We used to feel safe, uh, you know, around Star Wars crowds, safer than any other events, any other gatherings and stuff like that. And now it's kind of like going to Comic-Con in terms of you don't know what kind of weirdo you might run into. There are some really, really, really dark, angry, mean elements out there now in fandom that I really wish they would just move on to something else and let the people that are interested in having fun and enjoying the fandom, you know, do their thing. So once again, on behalf of everybody here, thank you so much for listening and we will see you soon. Here, at Geek Fest Rants. Bye-bye, everybody. What interests you um, about the conflict between good and evil? Well, the conflict between good and evil is the basic conflict. Uh, the, the universal question um, is, am I a good person? Um, I mean, not counting social misfits, of course. or uh, um, people, the, people like you and me. No, no, I mean... Am I a more, good, are you a good person? Uh, I try to be a good person. But, of course, that's a very complicated question. It is. And it's something you have to ponder because you're doing it every day. You're saying, should I do this or shouldn't I do this? Now, through mythology and things, we're taught certain things that are good and certain things that are bad. But uh, a, a thinking person questions all that and say, is this really good? Am I really doing the right thing here? Am I really being a kind, compassionate person? Because to me, that's really about a compassionate person as opposed to a person that is consumed with self-interest or a selfish person. Those are the two things. Mm -hmm. We all have good and evil in us because we have the selfish side of us and we have the compassionate side of us. The idea is how do you keep those things in balance? And by keeping those things in balance, you can do a lot of good things. If you would like to subscribe to our show, send us messages, or see video links to some of the topics we talked about today, please visit our homepage at geekfestrants.com or our YouTube channel, Facebook page, or iTunes at Geekfest Rants. I don't know what we're yelling about! Geekfest Rants is produced by Carlos Perone, copyright 2019. <laughs>